All right, you got it. All right, wah, yep, wah, wah, wah. Good. All right, that's good enough. That's uh, that's gonna be the PowerPoint we see today. Let's hear the best. Okay, get out of here, bud. All right, here we go. So we head over to our classic board rehearsal site. We've got some exciting things to look at today. So the uh, the SharePoint team has been doing all sorts of awesome things. Uh, and one of the things that I really like uh, they've done, although I've seen uh, I've literally seen people roll their eyes at it, which makes makes me very sad. Uh, because it's awesome, uh, is the idea of our colored folders, right? So folder coloring here is this idea that we can have a folder and we can apply one of 16 beautiful colors to it, right? So there's 15 set colors and then the default of yellow. Uh, it's really easy to apply them, right? Just right click and say folder color and you can change those here. So now that becomes green, but that's horrible. So we don't want that. All right, we'll put it back to red and that looks great, right? So we can see that's pretty neat. Uh, and that's awesome. We can see that it shows up over in uh, Teams. Let's see if we still have Teams open somewhere. There we go. Teams over here. If we look at Teams, I can't drag Teams over. Ah, did anyone notice it's impossible to drag the window? There we go. Okay, so you can see in Teams, you got the colored folders here. You can even show up here in the, the channels. Uh, one caveat with that is while well, you can set the color for any other channel, you can't set the color for the general channel. Uh, and they don't show up in this uh, in channels view here of the colors. But uh, it doesn't really matter. Nice thing, it shows up in files. It shows them in a couple of different spots. It does not affect document sets, which makes us all very sad. Uh, but otherwise, hugely effective um, at quickly identifying uh, you know, what kind of things go in the folder and applying that. But this is a list formatting demo, isn't it? And that's not technically list formatting. It is, but it's out of the box, right? We want to look at how do we want to customize this a little bit. So what if we wanted to go a little further, right? So this is the type column. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's got a folder. It's got this uh, icon right for the file type. But what if we wanted to go a little further with that? Well, if we actually take a look at, uh, let's hit F12. We're going to open up our dev tools. F12, there we go. So we're just, we can inspect. If we take a look and say this guy right here, we can actually see over here, this guy's just an SVG. I'm not going to make you read that, but it's just an SVG and we can recreate those in this formatting. So uh, let's do that. So I'm just going to create a new column here. We're going to make it a text column. We're gonna call this our super type column, right? Cause it's even better than just type. I'm gonna put multiple lines of text. I'll explain that in a moment. We'll create that exciting super type column. I'm gonna just drag it over here so we can see it. Beautiful. Uh, and then we can start to do stuff with that, right? So we can format this column. And the first thing I wanna do is talk about, you know, how can we see that color, right? So if we were to just make a very basic format where we say Elm type is a div, whoop, whoop. All right, we say it's a div, and we say our text content, you know, just to prove it's working is wowie. That's good, All right? So now we can see that that's working, right? But now we can swap that out. We can actually pull in a value. So there's a column, right, called underscore color hex, right? And you would think, oh, that probably means a hex value, but and you'd be wrong. Right, because that corresponds to the color, right? So it's not a hex at all. Uh, it is a number between uh, zero and 15, right? Zero or blank is gonna be the default. That's gonna be that yellow, right? So that's what you're gonna get there, but that's how you determine what color it is. Now I've also put it over here, but that was just so I could order these so I could see the pretty rainbow styles. So that's how we get that. So what can we do a little further? So I've gone ahead and stripped out the SVG for that folder. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over here. So we don't have to watch me type it. And so we can see, let's make this a little bigger. There we go. The idea here is let's preview that and make that a little bigger. Now we have a folder, right? So all we've done is we've taken the SVG from the folder and we've mapped it into a format, right? So we've got a few different paths here and, and so on. Now, one thing to note, if you're, if you're really looking, you might notice it's a slightly different look and that's in the fact that there is a gradient on the out of the box ones. Uh, but because we don't have the ability to do gradients or pass in the URL like they're doing as the background, uh, we're, we're just going flat. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we could probably get a little fancier, but I think that's pretty good for now. Obviously, it's not respecting the colors, though. So let's do that. So the way we would respect those colors is through a formula, right? So an expression where we would take a look, again, at that uh, color hex value. So if we just look at kind of maybe the, the, main, the main part of that folder first, uh, we'll see if we can color that. And I think that's this bottom one. So let me just grab this formula here over there and we'll come back over here and that's this guy. So instead of filling it directly, let's set that to an expression. 
you know, casual expression here. Let's preview that. Oh, that's one of the other colors. So let's just copy this whole thing. We'll just take a look at it that way for time here. Boom. Boom. So the idea here is all we're really doing is we've just got that same SVG that's drawing. But in each case where we're setting the color, we're specifying that based off that color hex, right? So when it's 15, use this. When it's the default, use this, and so on. It's a little ugly to read because we don't have switch statements. But it, so because we have these if statements, right? We just nest those all the way down, and we do it three times for all the different three different SVG parts. And there we go. We have colored folders, and it's very, very exciting, right? And the other thing we've done is right here is we're hiding this. So if we take this out, for instance, just so we can see what it does, I take that out and I preview that. Now you'll see that, hey, these aren't folders. What's going on, right? Why are we drawing folders? That's crazy, right? So the way we can fix that uh, is <laughs> uh, we can add that back in, right? So we have that display. Oh, uh, that color display, yeah, blah, blah, basically like that, perfect. And the idea here is we're doing a content type ID. So if I were managing the content types, I would have a content type column without the ID and I could just reference it by name and I'd say folder. Uh, because I'm not managing content types. The only thing I have right now is the content type ID. And if you take a look at, say, the base content type hierarchy, uh, you can see the way those work is they slowly get built out. So a folder starts with this 120, uh, and then it goes from there. As it goes down to the list, so you're going to do that starts with. That way, even though it's the list content type, uh, you're still detected. So that's exciting. So we're saying only show it right when it's a folder. right? So and if it's not a folder, show none. So when we preview that, right, those go away. So, wow, that's exciting. All right, so now what about down here? We wanted this file type. Yeah, so, so far, we're just recreating out-of-the-box functionality, and that is exciting. <laughs> but I will show you why we're doing this in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and just grab uh, this next piece, which is our file preview, which is really exciting. All right, let's come down here to the very bottom. We've got our children here. Last child. We're just going to paste that guy in. Get rid of that extra comma. We'll see if I pasted that correctly. I did. So the way this works is you add an element type of file preview. When you add a file preview, uh, by default, you're going to see a lot of examples, and we'll see this in a moment. We're going to provide a thumbnail. We've taken a look at the thumbnail. And what this is doing is wrapping up you know, the things it knows about the file for you. It's going to go ahead and apply some of these icons. So there's a bunch of icons here. Uh, if we take a look over at, uh, oh, go away, that thing. We'll just hope I'm not showing anything terrible underneath there. Perfect. Okay. So, right, we have this idea of these are the brand icons, and we also have these file type icons. Uh, with the file preview, uh, we get access to both of those, which is awesome. So, we can see here that you can apply, you know, your file preview props, and in those, you can apply styles to each of those, the brand icons or the file type icons. In this case, I don't want to show the brand type icon. I just want the file type icon, and I want this size and transparent and so on, so it looks fine when I hover over it, and that gives me that nice icon. Wow, I've recreated a column. Now, why would I do that, right? Let's take it a little further here, uh, and we're going to go ahead and just copy this one so we can see it. And the idea here is I'm going to paste that, and if we take a look up here, wah, 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 way up here. Uh, so we've got the folder icon here, and what I've done is I've wrapped this down here in what's called a click. I'm calling this a click target. It's just a div that I'm absolutely positioning over the whole thing. And what that allows to happen is instead of having to apply a custom card uh, to the individual SVG or other stuff, because it creates different issues when we've got those nested SVGs, I'm just hovering a div over it and applying the custom card to that. All right, so now we can see that uh, we should have a hover card. Oh, we got a preview. Hit preview. All right, now we get this idea that, ooh, now we get this cool thing here. So now we can actually see details about the folder, right? Including, you know, we have this idea of we've got the title, we have this description, which we'll see in a moment. And we can even see it, uh, details about what might be inside it, right? So we've got the, the folder, we've got the file. Let's go ahead and save that so we don't lose it when we navigate. We can actually click on that and we'll navigate in. And we can see that does match. It actually has those things. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now we've got that. And we can come down here. We don't have anything for this. So let's expand that as well, just for fun. So fun. All right, let's paste over that. I'm going to preview that guy. So basically the same thing, uh, right, except now. We've got a file preview, and let's take a look at how that's working. So we have our same file preview we had before with the icon, and then we've got a custom. We're doing the same kind of click target over it because there's some weirdness with the, the uh, elements it generates here. So we've got our custom card props on the hover. In this case, instead of specifying the file preview props, we're just specifying an attribute of source, and we're saying we want a thumbnail, and you could say like large here or medium or small, 
Or in my case, I'm going to say I want the width of 172, right? Because, hey, that's what I'm showing here. Now, I still need to constrain this because this isn't going to give me an exact uh, thing. It's going to give me the, basically, it's going to approximate, you know, probably it's going to pull the small for me and so on. But that creates this nice preview so I can see that. And that's really cool. Again, I get that file, the brand icon that's showing there. I could style that and everything else. But this gives me some really nice functionality. So let me save that. And then let's come up here and let's rename this thing. Yeah, right, let's edit this column and set a super type. Let's uh, let's hit Windows P to get an emoji. We'll say document. Boom, like that. Make it pretty, right? And then we'll hit save. You know, I could make it just that to match kind of what they're doing, but uh, we can only go so small. So let's bring that over here. All right, and then we're going to, uh, where's our add remove columns? All right, show or hide columns. And I'm just going to get rid of type. Bye. All right, so that's pretty cool. And so then the other thing we could do, Right, so because this is on the folder, we can't do certain things like uh, set value or inline edit field because they're come back as read only fields. And in fact, if you try, you'll be a little frustrated. It'll look like it just doesn't even work. Uh, so that's why we've got this note about the grid view. So if we edit this the grid view, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, a few descriptions I have so we can just see that working. All right, let's paste those in, maybe. Let's try that again. Bomb. Did it work? I don't know. We'll just do it manually, okay. If we put all of the evilness here, right? Assumption later, and then we put our, you know, just put in a couple of descriptions here. And the idea is if we put these right on the field itself, we'll edit this right, we'll just put a couple in. Uh, now we get this description, right? So now we can actually guide people on what should be inside this folder in addition to our colors. Uh, because we could fully control the rendering of this, uh, you know, I was experimenting with uh, hovering emojis over it or even the icons on these things. So you could have an additional category or that kind of thing. So you can start to do a lot of things with the color, or you can even do an additional row class where maybe you highlight certain things or color coordinate, color coordinate other things in your rows uh, to match all that. And that's very, very exciting. Wow. And uh, like I said, I don't have slides. This is a sample that is available to you. Uh, so be sure to check that out. It is a column sample called the generic super type. Uh, and that is actually, I did not publish it. So I will publish that now and uh, that'll be available to you. And that's, uh, that's all I got. Wow.